The city of Bydgoszcz is the eighth biggest urban centre in Poland. Rising to prominence as a trading hub in the 18th century, today the city is known for its leafy waterfront, huge recreational forest park, and its beautifully restored historic centre. It's also where you'll find the Museum of Soap and the History of Dirt, the city's most popular museum, drawing at least 50,000 visitors annually, who are curious to find out just what a museum with such a name has to offer. Recently I spoke with Valdemar Buina, the head of marketing at the museum, and also a tour guide in the city of Bydgoszcz, to find out just why such a museum exists. But before we get started, if you're interested in seeing more English language content on Poland, make sure you hit the subscribe button, as well as the bell for notifications. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you give us a like, as well as a comment below. Voldemar Buina, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you begin with telling us a little bit about the history of Bydgoszcz? First sign of settlement is something like 10,000 years ago. The city rights uh, Bydgoszcz get in the 14th century by the Kazimir the Great. And since then, uh, Bydgoszcz uh, just starts growing. Maybe that was not the, the biggest growth, because the biggest growth uh, would be in the Industrial Revolution in the 18th uh, and 19th, 20th century. But uh, city rights change a lot. Uh, especially we finally have a castle, uh, because Casimir the Great wanted to have a castle, small castle, right here. Uh, and uh, we joined to the Amber uh, trade route. So, yes, Bydgoszcz has a lot of uh, traders. In the past, rivers was the main road to, to transport things. That was the most easy and cheap way right. uh, to do this. So we want to connect Bydgoszcz to the West Europe. Bydgoszcz in those times was under the rule of uh, Prussian. So uh, they decided to create a water canal. They just start to dig at 20, almost 25 kilometers of the water canal uh, and connect uh, West Europe to uh, Bydgoszcz. The Bydgoszcz Canal was completed in 1775. For the first time in history, the Vistula, the main river in Poland, was connected to the Oda River system via the Berda and the Notec. This opened up trade with other Prussian centers like modern-day Wrocław and the capital Berlin as well as allowing goods to travel further east in Europe. From this point onwards, Budgosh began to develop very quickly. The Prussian legacy of this area is noticeable in the architecture of the old city centre, most notably on the Berda riverfront. Yes, for some points, for some places, yes, especially a uh, music district is very, very similar to the Berlin uh, architecture. So uh, sometimes Bydgoszcz is called a small Berlin right. uh, because yes we have very similarities uh, but not in the in the uh, in the uh, all points of view. So how important was Prussia to the development of Bydgoszcz? This is important because as everybody know uh, Poland have very problematic history with, uh, with the Germans but for Bydgoszcz that was one of the most important period of time because they want to invest here they know that uh, this is great city because it is very close uh, to the different countries Bydgoszcz was almost on the on the borders so that's right. a great place so so to just to, to trade with other countries uh, that's why they want to invest here. Uh, and that's why we have uh, a top 10 cities, uh, if you think about the biggest cities in Poland. In the second half of the 18th century, heavy industry began to creep into the city's landscape. Encouraged by the establishment of a railway junction, a range of commodities and industrial materials soared into production. Wheat, metal, wood, machinery parts and soap. We know when first factory was built right here, that was in the uh, second half of 18th century. Mr. Gum, Mr. Gum and his family create a factory of soap and they just sell soap to almost all uh, Europe. In the 1920th century, we have even five factors of soap in the one, in one moment. So that was, yes, that was a huge, uh, huge development of the soap. The soap. So there's obviously a strong soap legacy in Bydgoszcz, but whose idea was it to actually start the museum? 
We have uh, two owners. We have uh, Mrs. Daria and Mr. Adam. And Mrs. Daria uh, just works in the, in the uh, tourism uh, even today. And Adam is uh, a businessman. So nine years ago, Adam produced salts from goat milk. In the West world, people have this ecological vibe what we have today but in poland we must wait a few years mm. so he produced a very very great product but mm -hmm. Poles was not ready for it yes. uh, and they meet together and they think oh maybe we do something different and mm. they think oh wait a second maybe museum of soap a museum about soap and hygiene sounds like a novel idea and i'm sure most people listening to this video have never been to such a museum but for the general public, the topic of hygiene and soap production may sound a little dry, ironically speaking. But Voldemar and his colleagues are well aware of the fact that history, regardless of the topic, has to be made fun in order to be taught. When I was young and I was going to the museum, this was boring. Tour guys also was boring. They just have a lot of knowledge and it is great, but they didn't know how to interest a people. And we know how to interest the people. We have uh, two steps in our program. When uh, you visit our museum first, you make your own soap on the workshop, and this is your souvenir and the uh, ticket price. And then you have a tour for the museum. This is like almost an hour of the tour. And this is a strength of our museum. Every tour guide has his own character. Every tour guide has a different costume uh, from different uh, ages. To, to just to, to entertain the people. For example, uh, I like the communist times, so I have the uh, communistic times costume. Uh, my friend is completely expert about uh, Middle Ages, so he has Middle Ages uh, costume. And uh, this is also part of the entertainment in our museum that every of, of us have a quite different story to tell. We're telling a jokes, we're telling sometimes information that was hor horrible, disgusting, but this is the history and this is interesting for everyone. The museum's scope of history stretches as far back as ancient Babylon and as far forward as the 21st century. Wherever possible, it aims to highlight as much Polish history as possible, such as the toilet paper rationing of the communist era, cutting-edge hygiene technology from the 19th century, and the public bathing program implemented in the Kingdom of Poland during the Middle Ages. In the past, people didn't have their own bathroom mostly. Normally, people go to the public baths. You must pay them money and just go inside, like today. <laughs> Sometimes you can go for free if you are a poor person. On the cities have the, like a social program that you uh, you can enter once for for first day, one for, for once a month, something like that, for free completely. Bathtub was for two people, so you must go with someone different and even if you will go with your wife or your husband you will never know who you exactly meet in a tub that's how people meet each other in those times something like that was a quite uh, great uh, uh, social trend in the in the past we just washing uh, like once twice a week today mostly of us will wash uh, every day or once for two days so, so, so uh, frequency uh, is, is much, much higher today. Also, we just have better, better chemicals. In the past, they have just water and herbs. Soaps was most, mostly used only for laundry. So water with herbs is not the, the greatest idea uh, to wash yourself. Today we have soaps, showers, shampoos, everything. So, so yes, today we have a better solutions. Also, antiperspirants, uh, desodorant, this is a very, also great, uh, great stuff. If you're interested in knowing more about the Museum of Soap and History of Dirt, you can visit their website, www.museummedois.pl. English language tours are available, but it's advised that you book ahead by phone or on the website. A single ticket entry costs 18 zlotys. And if you're interested in seeing more English language content on Poland, head along to poland.inyourpocket.com.